Hello and welcome to the Listening Post's unboxing channel on YouTube. Today it is with great pride that I'm unboxing BenQ's reference projector, their W12000. This DLP projector is astonishing. It is a dedicated home theatre projector for connoisseurs. It's 4K Ultra HD, uh, 8.3 million pixels, 100% of rec something video standard. It's got Philips' new uh, LED lamp. This is ultra bright, um, two, two and a half thousand NC lumens. I think they call it an HLD lamp. An astonishing way of taking LCD light and creating an intensely bright, intensely pure white and giving you the advantage of 20,000 hours lamp life. This is a set and forget projector as far as its installation. Put it on the ceiling, turn it on and off any time you like, any number of times you like, and it's going to be amazing from day one until a thousand and one. It's a perfect, perfect projector. It's also very big. So look at its box. I've unboxed some pretty large projectors, done a couple of unboxing videos recently on some new Epson models. This is that giant killer above that in quality. BenQ W1200. So, like any large box, it's going to be a little bit more interesting to open. It's got factory seals, um, branded BenQ. The process of opening it is, is pretty straightforward. Folding down the flaps reveals just the care that they have taken with such a beautiful product. The packaging is superb. It's all closed cell foam, it's all designed specifically for this model. Tucked in under some of that is a comprehensive multilingual uh, owner's manual. This thing is, it's, uh, look, it's got every detail you would possibly need, every feature is mentioned, every setup example is mentioned, everything. So it's wonderful to see a good hard copy book. It's got its accessory pack and because the majority of this is all about the projector, the accessory pack's quite small. Quite a small box. It's got a couple of these clips and um, zip ties. Now they're associated specifically in tying the uh, power cord to ensure that it can never come out. They've got some, some more of them there, just in case you end up breaking them. It's got um, BenQ's user manual on a CD-ROM. Couple of those. It's got its remote control of which it runs with uh, the AAA batteries supplied. It's a box. The remote is lovely. It's um, it's sealed in its own little closed cell foam bag. Okay. Now, first impressions of the remote. It's got a lovely weight to it. It's a little bit uh, top heavy at present because there's no batteries in it. The batteries go on the base and then it evens out really, really nicely, leaving it. Um, beautiful as far as how it sits in the hand. It's got a comprehensive operation. It allows you to go in, in and out of all of the menu functions and adjust absolutely every parameter of this projector. Now, with any large heavy item, the easiest thing to do is roll it over. Now, I'm going to move the remote out of the, out of the way for a moment. The easiest, anything heavy, anything take the box off rather than taking the product out. It means, of course, it's a lot easier to get access to these beautiful products. Now from here, it's relatively straightforward. The closed cell foam, again mentioning the fact that it's been uh, beautifully cut for um, any of the angles to support the projector. We start at this point, of course, getting a really good sense for the size of this projector. It is not small, and it is not light. Next step is just to, there's no tape holding the bag closed, it's simply folded. Um, and under one of the feet, it's pretty straightforward as far as just sort of slipping it over what is required. The bag itself is a little bit oversized, giving a little bit of flexibility. As soon as it's over one of the sets of feet, it's pretty straightforward as far as sliding the rest of it off. Okay. Uh, oh, 
there we go. Somewhere in there, we've got its IEC power cord. This is two to three meters long. It's a um, three pin IEC power cord, New Zealand. It's got a nice little um, Velcro on there as well. Now, the projector itself, again, very heavy. Just give you an understanding of its physics. It's deep and it's wide. Um, spinning it around to the front, you'll see some care that has been given to the lens cover, ensuring that it's taped in place and won't come off. The tape is one of those things that comes away very cleanly. And as far as removing that, and then the lens cap, it's very, very straightforward. Spinning it around for a moment, you'll see some other things that they've utilised as far as packaging. And on this side, you'll see a little bit of tape closed, keeping closed the control flat door. Okay? So, from the start, firstly, at the rear of the projector, we've got a massive air vent. This, is, this ensures that the projector can use uh, the air flow through it to its maximum and run as cool and as quiet as possible. We have on this side a myriad of inputs and outputs. We'll start with the boring bits, which of course is the IEC power cable. Above it, we've got the inputs you would expect from any reference projector. A couple of HDMIs. Now these are gold-plated to ensure corrosion-free and excellent contact. We've got USB mini. Uh, this seems to be for the purposes of servicing. We've got a couple of triggers, and each of these can be programmed for different things. So uh, its state can be monitored. And of course you've got RS-232 for that two-way communication. Off to one side we've got LAN connection. Now this is for, again, an alternative for control. And then you've got IR in via a 3.5mm connection for the purposes of controlling this projector for its on-off and basic commands without the need for a uh, emitter stuck on it. As I mentioned with that blue tape that I removed, this, behind this spring-loaded door is the control of all of the menu features and functions, including lens and other operations. It's lovely. Nice look and feel to that. It's got an excellent feel and well built. There's a security sort of point there, anti-theft. Um, and spinning it around, we see its main lens. Now again, this is huge. It's got a little subtle warning thing saying don't look at the lens for obvious reasons. It's bright. At 2,200 lumens, uh, it's, yeah, you wouldn't want to catch that in the eye. We've got two massive grills at the front. You can see them, and they've used that to their advantage from a design perspective. Of course, these things are so large, they're likely to be on a ceiling. So it's lovely that they've sort of kept a little bit of um, style to them. Um, again, the grills allow a lot of airflow with no real issue as far as noise. The lens is huge. Uh, obviously, like photography, the larger the lens, the better from a, from a uh, photographic perspective. The same goes with projectors. It's got the ability to manually adjust focus and zoom. Tilting it forward for a moment, we see the first of the main dials associated with the lens shift. It has the ability to move up and down significant margins and a little bit of left to right as well. We've got some photographs and uh, sorry, some uh, logos associated with the DLP certification and please hang around for some photographs. We'll take some close-ups of all of these elements. At the rear, behind the BNQ logo, that's where the lamp goes. Um, and if I just tip it up for a moment, you'll see the mounting points underneath. Now, although it comes with rubber feet for potentially putting this on a shelf, it's logical that this is going to be set upside down on somebody's ceiling. So, here we go. This beautiful BNQ, the W12000. Uh, 20,000 hours lamp life, 2,200 lumens. It's got Philips' brand new HLD lamp. This is astonishing. It is a dedicated home theatre projector designed for the absolute enthusiast in mind, and it's perfect. So, there we have it. The BenQ W1200, sorry, 12,000 projector unboxed here at the listing post in Christchurch, New Zealand. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, subscribe to our channel.